hello, welcome to this wonderful Tuesday. Okay, Ryan. Yeah, Ryan, again, that was a rapid up fire to intro. bat. No, we have to be fast this time. Do we? We, have we to got be more quick? to cover. We have more I, to cover. I, I, we're not good at being fast, man. We're we're slow. We get off on we tangents. Got, I don't remember what happened the last time, but we covered two things for Unearthed Arcana, and we're still on this freaking train. We have three. Three to today. classes. Which is why I'm just going breakneck speed right into it. Oh, and, how's your day? Oh, How are you doing, Braxton? Do you can't do that. And now I've got the wrong page open, and you've been oh, you've done this to me. There we go. Okay, so real quick, um, Claire, Dark Boy, Druid, Fire, Wizard. Yes, yeah, so this is this done. is have yeah. fun. Bye. This one was posted on October second. No, we're, we're finished. We did what? it. I went through it. Good. Good. Yeah. This is posted on October 2nd. This is Unearthed Arcana for uh, the Cleric, Druid, and Wizard. You can't just ignore me like that. I'm ignoring. <laughs> no. It's <laughs> supposed to be a witty banter between two people who are moderately qualified to talk about D&D related That's things. true. That's true. And after this, what's we have three more after to do after this. These. I thought this was it. But then we got, <laughs> I, then we have, I think, our, the biggest thing that's cut out for us is the class features. That's a 13 page boy. Uh, 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 there we go. Offer why. <laughs> but then after that, uh, I'm pretty sure it's just the new one that got posted, the psionic. So we're almost caught up. I think we're only halfway through. Oh, well. <laughs> In terms of the timeline, it's been rapid fire. So based off of that, like you've had some stuff like spaced out and you went bam, 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 bam. But so now, just... next time when things get posted, we can just do one episode on it, cover it, move on, and continue whatever we're doing. See? The Unless problem is we were just so far behind. New book, and we have to cover that in a twelve-part series. Yeah, a new planar book that could be cool. Could be cool, and uh, we'll see with these. I don't think there's there's no plain stuff here, but oh, or is there? I mean, you can I saw planar first. stuff in every single one. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. They're tied to deities and things. Maybe the first, I don't the first know. We'll see. You'll see. You'll see. I think. I think they're all connected no, no. to, to, you to won't, planes. You won't see. Why not? You want to know why? Why? If this new cleric guy has anything to say, <laughs> uh, uh-uh, uh, you won't be seeing. He will. Because he's won't. a twilight domain. Oh yeah, he swims through the darkness. Swims, literally lives. As you will find out. Breathes later on. The darkness. Give us a little, give us a low down on this guy. So we're, ju- we're jumping right into this. We want to make sure we cover our ground here because this is honestly, I lo- I enjoy all of this. So let's we'll, we'll take yeah. like a let's take a five second pause. Okay. <gasps> so the lore for this guy again. If you haven't covered, uh, hang out with us for our other unearthed arcana stuff. We usually kind of the, the lore, and then we go into the mechanics, and then we kind of have our own thoughts on the mechanics process. Uh, but lore for this guy. I think it's it's I mean it's it's pretty broad mainly because in the section talking about the Twilight Domain cleric it talks about how uh, well it lists a bunch of deities and whatnot but it says this is the, the the domains or the sections that can be under healing or respite bravery or protection travel or transition night and dreams that's I mean that's that's a lot of different stuff to be covering there mm-hmm. uh, I personally enjoy the raven queen section they have there the most because there really isn't like a shadow fell cleric i guess there's there's the grave domain but that's kind of a little bit different i don't know i really like Can we it. talk about cool. how there's a deity in this world known as nut where, where is that at oh nut, nut. yeah i mean these are taken from uh majority are taken from uh, the um uh, the, the, the the forgotten realm stuff like yeah, Helm and, and Moon, Paylor, whatnot, Celestian, Morpheus, and Morpheus. I, I didn't see that the first time I read that through, but that's great. <laughs> I love it so much. So perfect. But yeah, Twilight Domain. These guys are interesting because right off the bat, you kind of break the mold a little bit in saying that this cleric uh, gains proficiency at level one uh-huh. with martial weapons and heavy armor. Which is, I don't, does that, a, does, do clerics get those things usually? I mean, you can get it, but yeah, it's not usually given to you right off the bat, no. This is interesting. It's a bonus proficiency. A lot of these uh, playtest um, classes, Sub- subclass, Sub-classes? what do we call these? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get bonus proficiencies on, uh, in this little triplet here. 
Uh, Which they're not is too cool. crazy. They're cool. They are cool. They add pretty fun dope. things. <laughs> um, it's cool. and, I mean, the dichotomy of light and dark, I think, is really cool in this guy. That you're working to fight off the, the dangers of the of the night and of the darkness, bringing light all to it. It's yeah, kind of kind of pretty. It's, it's kind of like the the guy that you're playing in our our Divinity Original Sin two run here. You've got the light and the dark. Yeah. Wait, what do you mean? Our Divinity Original Sin two run? What is that? What are you talking about? Well, you know, we all we do the this thing on podcasts, yeah. but Dungeon we also crawl. exist on Twitch under two different names. What? You at Melasior, M E L A C I O U R. Nice. And me, Nesugiru, N E S U G I R U. Uh-huh. Cut through that without messing up, like <laughs> last time. But we, uh, every Thursday from now on, I think we're going to be doing a Divinity Original Sin. Yeah, probably for some the next good old... two years. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I have put in 200 and something, no, like 300 or 400 hours in this game, despite what my Steam says, because I played it offline illegally sure. for a little bit. Not illegal, Steam Library Steam Share. Steam yeah. Uh, and we're role playing as two fun little guys, and Ryan's playing as the uh, one of these like night light modded Nightlight. class. I don't know what it is. I don't uh, Umbra, I think, is what's called. Yeah, and I'm doing my typical Arrow Thurge and Summoner class, and I'm playing as a very fun character. If you ever feel like seeing some role play slash some strategy gaming, yeah. Check and if you like D and D, which I assume you will, if you're, if you're I mean listening to this podcast. Dun- or divinity is very similar at least and kind of can be at the very least one tangent aside that's the one tangent that we get during this whole thing that's it's all we're allowed that's it that's it okay. that was right. my fault there um but to start off i mean when i was reading this guy um the divine domain for the cleric mm-hmm. the first thing here is really freaking great what the, um, the the spells oh I mean, yeah, you get extra spells. I mean, everybody gets. Do extra you know spells. a spell in there is probably the biggest spell for this guy? Well, I mean, there's a lot of really big spells, but one of the spells that really stands out to me for a cleric, uh, it's Aura of Vitality. Oh, I was gonna say Lehman's Tiny Hut because I love that spell. It was sure, okay, yeah, it's a cute little spell too. But Aura of Vitality is fantastic because it's it's basically like you're you can cast this spell and it originates out of you. I think it's like thirty feet around you, and you can choose to heal people. Like 3d6, I think it's 3d6, something like that. Every turn, either way, it's pretty awesome and it lasts for a good bit. So it's just, it's, and it's usually it's a paladin only spell. So giving that to clerics oh. is pretty sick. I wonder why it is that this cleric gets it specifically. What about the twilight? I think it validates it. To me, it's a good question because it's, I mean, the description of the spell is very, very similar to, um, one of its effects that it gets, uh, the the channel, the, this actually the second level boon, the channel divinity twilight sanctuary, uh, we can give a creature one d eight temporary hit points. Is it's uh, or vitality? It's like a bigger version of that. So I guess they were trying to add on to because you get that fifth level. So I guess the second level thing is like okay, you can kind of get a, a baby version of or vitality, and then once you hit this certain level, you can go crazy with it. Granted, it's temporary hit points then too. So. I think are pretty good. Thinking. Yeah, I just think that's, that's probably what they're going with to try to give a bigger version so it's not useless. Yeah, that's really cool. I mean, I thought about that um, prior to starting this that we should really cover the implications of those spells, and here I am just going straight by it again. <laughs> um, so thanks for pointing that out because some of these aren't really small changes. Um, no. Not, not at all. Uh, I know a lot of uh, people who homebrew might just kind of play spells like a melting pot and just everybody can do whatever. I've never done that, but I, I can yeah. see people doing it. So it's, this it's, is cool for the people. Doing that kind of breaks the fun of each class, though, because it kind of you know, each have their own little thumbprint. And then once you just go crazy with spells, then it can be a, it's not as cohesive of a subclass. Warlocks would be overpowered. Oh, uh, yeah. Warlocks <laughs> suck already, though. Hey, watch out. <laughs> you gotta get my warlock talking in here yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh, going back to where i had rudely jumped ahead right i wanted to talk about eyes of night mm-hmm. where you have blessed eyes now because you're cool twilight guy mm-hmm. and you have dark vision with, to, a, uh, um, to what the, 60 feet or 120 feet no no maximum range did you no maximum what now that's insane you just have overpowered complete strong awesome amazing dark vision but hey it makes sense 
Yeah. Because <laughs> you're a Twilight guy. And darkness is your friend. You can also give it to friends, though. Yeah. Wait. Did I not see that as well? You actually <laughs> benefit from the future creatures you see within 10 feet of you. Yeah, the for 10 minutes. You can just give it to anybody. That can, then they can, everyone, every party member can see everything for 10 minutes. First level. What? That makes, that makes dungeon crawling so much easier for a first level, too. Yeah. You don't you have to carry torches. Plus five wisdom. That's 50 minutes of amazing dark vision for everybody. Yeah. My word. Yeah. That's amazing. Stuff like that is so cool. The, I feel like first level stuff, a lot of the time, really kind of sets the precedent for the yeah, theme kind of, sets of the a lot tone. of the stuff. So this, I mean, to me, if I were reading this for the first time, it's the second time. Uh, if I were reading this for the first time, I would say, okay, this guy is going to be dealing a lot with being able to see in the dark. Yeah. I always Lame. appreciate the less combat stuff too. I like having options to do in and out of combat. So like, this is something to do as you are heading down into a cavern with your buddies, pop on eyes of the night for everybody. Sounds like a love song. Yeah. Pop on eyes of the night. My favorite, my favorite song and head on down dungeon crawling. Too bad. You don't have your, your little switchboard active in this. <laughs> You play some smooth jazz with that. But the What's the one? next thing? Vigilant blessing. Is the, this cool? Yeah, it's cool. The knight has taught you to be vigilant. That's it. That's all that's written there. Yeah. Uh, but you can give yourself <laughs> or another creature, someone you can touch at the very least, advantage on their next initiative roll. And then it ends afterwards, so they only get it once. Um, but how badass is that? Advantage. So, this just happens. Yeah. So I could give it to Braxton, and then for the next combat encounter, you'd have advantage on it. Then it you ends. You can do it to yourself, too. Yeah, you can touch yourself. And it doesn't, there's no do limitation on this, guys. There's no the cool down. You just give everybody initiative on No, not everybody. Or, just uh, one. Just one. Just yourself or somebody. Yeah. You only advantage. do give it to one person at a time, though. Actually, no. I think. See, I have a problem with whoever's writing the wording for this. They sure. need to get some of the people from Magic. I was about to say, yeah, to Magic's very descriptive. I've never, like, ma Magic can be, there can be problems there, but it's always clear. Yeah, it's a little wordy part. sometimes, but, it, I mean, once you break it down, it makes sense. You give one creature you touch, mm -hmm. including possibly yourself, meaning you could do you and somebody else. See, how I would interpret it is it means you can give it to one person or yourself. Because you can't touch yourself. But then it would say, or you. Yeah, I don't know. I lean in the camp of, you could, you know, kind of like touch your face and then touch somebody else's face. <laughs> and be like, you maybe now are prepared. I don't know. We'll and have it said to... it ends immediately after the roll, or if you use this feature again. So I guess there's no limit either. It, once the combat's over, you can just give it to someone else again and keep going. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. So interesting. yeah, I'll have to look up and see if this vigilant blessing thing works. And I'm sure the internet exists and has figured it out now. Uh, yeah, it's but here we get to months. you know the signature thing, Ryan. The channel, the channel divinity. divinity. That's not how. Oh, that's not right. You didn't do that correct. Try it again. Please. Channel divinity. Original original sin two. <laughs> Twilight sanctuary. We're both lame. So Channel uh, Divinity is always, uh, you know, that's when you always get, yeah, like he said, into the main meat of the cleric classes. Mm, um, mm, mm, and this is, we touched on it earlier. It allows you, as an action, to emanate a sphere of twilight around you, 30 foot radius. And the area then is filled with dim light, which is important for there are some spells that require dim light or some spells that, Get, I got a couple of them. Yeah, get more damage in dim light, so that's an important thing to read. It's not just fun little flavor. And it lasts for a minute or until you are in incapacitated or die, which, you know, can happen. Yeah. Uh, but then whenever a creature, including yourself, ends its turn in the sphere, you can then grant that creature a benefit, uh, whether you're giving it temporary hit points, 1d8, or ending an effect that has caused it to be charmed or frightened. That's pretty huge. This is second level as well. Sorry, my mind just backtracked. Uh huh. So, to touch on this again, because playing Magic just does, does this to me. If I can't figure out a rule right now, I have to keep thinking about it. 
Okay. Also, this uh, this divinity thing is pretty nifty. I enjoy it. Um, you give one creature you touch. Yeah. Including possibly yourself. Uh huh. So in order to include something, it has to be within the parameters of the variable they give sure. you being one here. So in order to include yourself in one, it has to only be you. Does that make sense? Maybe. So if it said you give two creatures you touch, including yourself, meaning it could be one and somebody else. Okay. But if it says you give one creature you touch, including yourself, you can really only include yourself because there's only one. Sure, uh, because it says possibly. That's the key. It's just that wording's weird. Okay, let's move forward again. Well, again, this this is on Earth Arcana, so by the time this comes out for real, they'll probably have fixed all the wording issues. They, a lot of the what's the what's the term i guess the semantics of this or yeah the, um, structuring of the sentences to uh relay information about including or excluding targets is not consistent with um how it is in the player's handbook yeah well, like, like i said especially play test. one creature you touch and possibly yourself like i feel like that's never been worded that way before no definitely not which is weird. It's never hanging up on that, but it just... Well, it definitely sounds like somebody, you know, before it's gone through, like, it's still a like rough draft. It doesn't sound like yeah. it's been edited. Yeah, I wonder if that's, if that's the case. Huh. I'm sure they don't have, like, contractors coming in and, you know, signing everything and make sure this is 100% sound. A genie cannot trick you if you wish <laughs> Espe- to. Especially for something like this, for something there's tossing out there and seeing what people think. There's another part later that I had to read several times so that I don't remember when it shows up. Um, so, yeah, sum it up again. Giving um, 1d8 temporary hit points or uh, ending an effect caused, uh, caused, that caused somebody to be charmed or frightened. Which means they still become charmed or frightened, but once they end their turn in that sphere, it goes away. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's a big sphere. 30 feet radius. Big old it's sphere. A Again, big area. there's that rules tip. Anytime temp hit points have shown up in these playtest things, remember they don't stack if you yeah. have... 15 temporary hit points, and you get 7 temporary hit points again, it does not stack. You yeah, can either take the, the 7 and go to 7, or take the 15 and go to 15. And but as if I've you're getting before, smacked around and lose those temporary hit points, then you just get healed right back yeah. up. But think about this. Another reason this matters is, say, you got Armor of Agathis, which I've explained this before. We'll yeah. do it again because I think it's important. Those Armor of Agathis uh, hit points that deal um, cold damage when you get hit are unique to those hit points so if you have 10 yeah. armor of agathis hit points and that goes down to one and a cleric or this guy gives you another eight temporary hit points those do not turn into armor of agathis you still only have one armor of agathis sure. um or whenever that goes away sorry so some, something to keep in mind whenever you're going through these uh whenever you're someone's getting cast and this stuff when you another important fact you're about this it's not a spell and it's not concentration so you do this along with other stuff. It just takes an action. You rock it at the beginning of combat and then keep it going while you're doing other stuff. Yeah, it sounds like this guy's really kind of popping off like right before combat and right at the beginning of it. It's popping off. Pretty cool. And, I mean, man, this guy's, this guy's so brave. He steps of the steps brave. Steps of the brave. He's a dancer. At level six. <laughs> no, he's not. He could oh. be if you want. Uh, but you know, he, uh, starts withdrawing his strength from that mm-hmm. good old twilight and you find, uh, that you are, you know, you're at home in this dark. No one scares you. You know, that shadow that used to be in the, the, the closet. Yeah. It's not there anymore. It's, it's your no, friend. It's, no, it's kind of scary to look at. He's Joe. Russell's my Jimmy's. shadow demon. No, Jimmy's, Jimmy's are not Russell because you now have advantage on saving throws against being frightened. Mm-hmm. Just. Always? Always. Yes. That's and this guy awesome. is pretty good at preventing the frightened stuff, as we found out in our previous ability. But there's another bullet here, which I thought was so freaking cool. And yeah. at first I went, wait a minute, is this guy just flying slash swimming in darkness? So if you are in uh, some good old juicy dim light or darkness, mm-hmm. take a bonus action and you give yourself a flying speed as fast as your walking speed. My man can fly! In darkness. Yeah. How cool is that? That is so freaking cool, man. In the Underdark, this is where this guy, I think, shines. Oh, yeah. Now, imagine, you know, you've been fighting a main villain for a while, and they know you've got one of these guys on your team. He gets a flashlight when you're flying in order to thwart you, turns it on, and you just come crashing down. Imagine that. I'm imagining it. 
and I think it look it could be like a movie scene. Yeah, it's not the craziest ability, but I think it's so freaking cool. Well, being able to fly. I mean, it's not like again, it's not a spell or anything, and just being able to fly just at will. That's a very cool ability. Oh, I just imagine like dark wings show up, but nobody can see them because they're dark. But oh. I really love what they do with this. This it, it's not crazy, and it's not not useful it's uh-huh. very in track with the original player's handbook i feel yeah it's very very flavorful too it really really works here um and then we get into the divine strike you're kind of big uh smite slash strike uh move at eighth level um you can now infuse your weapon with the divine energy of the twilight essentially uh and on each of your turns when you hit uh, a creature with a weapon very straightforward do an extra 1d8 psychic damage at 14th level increases to 2d8 very reminds, straightforward. Reminds me a lot of the Paladin stuff. This guy has some Paladin features, it seems, in him. Uh, and it also seems to be pretty split between combat stuff and utility stuff. And I think it's yeah, good to like just an kind off of, healer. Yeah, to, to build up each side of the cleric so you're able to withstand some heavy hits and get in there if you have to. Okay, I could see me playing this completely. And oh. don't forget, we got proficiency with martial and heavy armor at the beginning of this. Yes, too, so. so you're probably picking that stuff up right off the bat. Imagine a flying, heavily armed, stick wielding, flailing, scary night swimmer dude. That's badass. That's this guy. But Should yell on something about the Raven Queen as he goes charging into a mind flare. Give me. I'm just imagining this guy being an Aarakocra. Just I feel like that's can. <laughs> this, this is what. But they can fly already. Aarakocra got his wings clipped, and now he can only fly. Oh, in darkness. that's sad. There you go. That's it. But at level 17, Ryan, take away. I'll let you have the cherry on top. The Midnight Shroud. Uh, you can harness the shrouding power of night to protect your allies and stymie... Is that how you pronounce that? Stymie? Yes, it is. Perfect. Your foes. So this is allows you to cast the darkness spell, utilizing a spell slot, and you can choose a number of creatures, and it does say including yourself, equal to your wisdom modifier. And those creatures can then see through this darkness, similar ish ish to the uh, kind of the shadow fell sorcerer that exists in Xandathar's. I think there's a build for tieflings where um, they kind of bank on being able to see in the darkness that they create uh, and uh, yeah. kind of screwing people up. So I think that's maybe it was inspired by that or. No, they just found some good synergy here with that. So it's pretty strong. I mean, a 17th level, again, as I had forgotten at the beginning of this little series, that's really that's really high. <laughs> yeah, th- and, though, I, I don't know if this is a good 17th level boon. I think this is a little weak compared to... It is a little weak, honestly. Looking at other cleric 17th level stuff, uh, it just seems not as powerful. But... I guess using the right manner in combat can really change the whole flow of it. So you can use it in a myriad of situations, but it still only does one thing, which is why I feel it's lackluster. Yeah. It only results in you and your party being able to have the benefits of being unseen while seeing somebody in a ball of darkness. Yeah. I mean, I could see like if someone's about to die, you cast darkness on you and the rest of the party and you can keep that guy protected. But for 17th level just seems a little lackluster. Join the lackluster high level Aww. feature club. Go cry in my uh my little warlock corner over there. <laughs> As we begin to move on because we're we're timing this pretty well. We're about a third through. Yeah, well what are your final thoughts on? What do you think of it? Oh yeah, we need to slow down, Braxton. Slow down. <laughs> he uh, just wants to go. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. I feel like this really is in line with the things that have come to exist in the past mm-hmm. in terms of features lots, for a class. Of utility in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it gave you some great spell. Like, don't forget, uh, as Ryan pointed out, that Aura Vitality is really, really interesting in some of the spells. They've added greater invisibility and visibility. I don't know if they had that before. Uh, Lehman's Tiny Hut's really cool. And some great role-playing options. This class, I feel, would give you a sense of control over... Um, a variety of situations in and out of combat, which I think control during the session really helps people feel like a certain type of people feel like they are playing the game. Yeah. Versus you you think know, of some of things you're going to be doing. 
because the ranger was lackluster or maybe the arcane uh trickster was kind of wonky um and you don't really feel like you're doing much or having much efficiency but this i feel has has its place and yeah i would maybe tweak a couple of things like the wording and that last thing just maybe give it like a tiny little extra little little spice just add a little salt on top of there just a little salt I mean, I could see this being used. Let's say, you know, let's say you know what type of campaign you're going into. This would be great for a Shadowfell-based campaign, uh, a Ravenloft-based campaign, um, an Underdark-based campaign, anything that deals with dark stuff. I think this would be a perfect addition. If Edgar Allan Poe would have written a poem or put it in a book, there you go. That's this guy. But yeah, Shadowfell. Make your guide Edgar Allan Poe. Make him really brooding and and. Talk about ravens a lot. We talk about ravens a lot. Because he's from the Shadowfell. No. With the Raven Queen. And he worships Nut. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I like him. I don't think it's like, wow, but it, it's in line with what I've seen in the past. Yeah. Which is not in line with the rest of these guys. Yeah, the next one is the Druid, the Druidic Circle of Wildfire. Now, everything I hear for the Druid, I just think of Malfurion and his oh my voice. Goodness. Every title I read is just Circle of Wildfire. <laughs> just that kind of voice. Every bit. He's so, a, Matt, please, he's a nice please guy. imagine that. I, could, I imagine guess that's that okay. Time. It is okay. He's a cool guy. He's pink and green. He has, antlers. Uh, I don't know. He's, I'd say he's, he's a little more buff. purple than pink. But. We can agree to disagree. I, I, I think uh, you're wrong and crazy. Well, maybe you're just colorblind. So. That would suck. Please don't wish that upon me. But hey, video games have accessibility traits so that you can change that. Ooh. Sidetrack away. Fire to members of this wildfire. Understand the necessity that, it, that exists around things needing to be destroyed in order to promote growth of That's things cool. new. It is kind of cool. So it's not just destroy, 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 but also build. Like the popular Cartoon Network show, Destroy, Build, Destroy. <laughs> That thing was oh so old, goodness. and I only saw it when I was like, do you remember that? Yeah. I, oh, I don't hey. think I've thought of that show in like 15 years. Ryan got my reference. Because <laughs> it's an older reference. That's probably why I got it. Yay. I just didn't know you watched Cartoon Network. Cool. <laughs> so just imagine that long hair, flowy, white, white t-shirt wearing guy. That is this yeah, guy, Yeah, it's uh, Andrew WK, right? Oh, my God. You're right. Yeah, he has like music and stuff. What? Yeah, Man, I need to. I need to see how he's doing. So <laughs> these druids bond with a primal spirit that kind of embodies the idea of this destructive. Well, life. let me stop you right there. Okay, I'm st- I'm done. As a DM, I would love to just brew a, a like in my world to add this circle of druids somewhere into it. I I just love the idea around a lot of a lot of the druidic circles. You could say are kind of guarding. You know, openings from the plane of water or plane of yada yada. These guys are obviously the plane of fire type of dudes. And I just I just love their aspect of nest, knowing that things need to be destroyed, but that, you know, like you mentioned, that things need to be regrown and rebirthed afterwards. Like Phoenixes. Like a phoenix. Oh my <laughs> gosh, we are on the same wavelength oh this time. Goodness. I'll tell you what. So uh, I had the thought, but that Phoenix ditto just kind of freaked me out. <laughs> you owe me a soda, by, by the way. Blackout Jinx 10. Oh, my god. Gotta goodness. say my name back 10 times. Holy mackerel. I used to it's actually like we just went by back that to rule. Middle school. We did, actually. I used that a lot in uh, kindergarten. But I digress. Um, these guys, I feel, if you were to write a kind of a story and had a moral dilemma of maybe there's a society in the forest or a situation going on where you've got people stri- like trying to struggling to live and it's just a really awkward uphill battle for them to kind of restore everything and these druids roam along and they're of the camp that hey we just need to wipe it clean mhm and create a new thing but that creates problems because the people that live there of course have loved ones they don't want to just die and then become a new and yeah. this is a popular trope um as i'm sure Ryan's either read some things or seen some things that are like that where no we just everything needs to be done versus everything needs to be protected and kind of forged well it's like without spoiling too much it's like the thanos from the avengers movies Ooh, yeah very similar to that so here you go thanos wildfire druid <laughs> <laughs> yeah you said malfarian's purple there you go yeah thanos is purple he 
He's kind very of. purple. Yeah. He's definitely not pink. Okay, don't you dare say he's like blue or something. No, I, I'm with you. He's purple. All right. Well, that was fun. Thanks for stopping me there. I enjoyed that little little, little reference puddle. So let's get into <laughs> their their circle spells. They draw yeah. circles. Uh, I think, well, the fact immediately gives them a firebolt as a cantrip, which is a great one. Well, I mean, that's second, yeah, level. second level. Yeah. Um, that's pretty, that's a great cantrip for druids to have because it gives them some damage, which they normally don't have too many damagey cantrips. And if you look, the big fifth level slot has fireball in it. A druid toss and some fireballs around. It's fantastic. Now, let me ask you, and we probably mm-hmm. could have done this at the end, but sure. do you think it would be unfair to throw an enemy that is resistant or immune to fire against this guy? Like, would he just feel slighted? No, I mean, you'd have to do stuff like that at some point. Have If the stakes get high enough, they would probably... I mean, for example, let's say they go back to this guy's circle, his, his family, his group of druids, and there's a break in the plane of fire and they have to go close it. Everything coming out of the plane of fire portal is going to be resistant or immune to fire damage. So Which is why he needs the help of some tre- trepid adventurers. Yeah, some morons who want to go into the forest. Yeah, so I was just thinking about that. It was looming in my brain. I'm sure he's got other utility. Yeah, I mean, it'll, it'll make for a, a fun encounter. Mm-hmm, absolutely. And it does have fire shield at 7th level, so. So yeah, this whole circle spell thing essentially says any spell that you receive through this that is not a cleric spell is nonetheless a cleric spell for you. True. Uh, and it throws some really cool stuff. You get locate animals or plants, fireball, plant growth, or of light, fire shield, flame strike, raise dead. Right, uh, that's cool important. stuff. Yes. <laughs> But uh, the kind of centerpiece to all this is your summon wild, mm-hmm. wild little familiar fire. guy, little familiar guy. Um, get a um, flaming primal spirit that is bound to your soul, um, and you can bring it out as an action and expending one use of your wild shape feature. So rather than um, shape is shifting yourself, mm-hmm. you can bring out a fire fire spirit. It's Boy. like the uh, the beast hunter companion guy, but or ranger. Sorry. I, was, I think I'm talking about World of Warcraft, but yeah. <laughs> but it's a little cooler, or sh- or should it's I a say, a little hotter? <laughs> oh, because if this guy is within thirty feet of anybody aside from you, well, sorry, no, within ten feet of anybody yeah, aside from you, there you go. Uh, they need to succeed on a Dex saving throw when it enters the field, or take two d ten fire damage. Mm-hmm. And this, anytime somebody, I believe. It says, and this. the important thing is it says each creature, so your friends. Yes, so be careful where you place this. I was, I was a little dumbfounded by this when I saw it. I was like, oh, dang. But it's got some interesting risk-reward continuing on. Uh, the spirit is, of course, friendly to you and your companions and obeys your commands. So, again, this does operate on its own. It can, mm-hmm. uh, but during combat, should you not assign it an action with your bonus action, um, of, kind of, of which there. if you use your bonus action you can have it take the dash disengage help or hide action or the attacks that it has in its stat it block has. and they're pretty interesting we'll get to those next um, but it will by default take the dodge action mm-hmm. if you do not give it something to do uh, it lasts for an hour or until it reaches zero hit points or until you use your wild shape again so if you shape shift because you need to or kind of something like that or you want to move it around it goes away so it's uh kind of cool and ryan feel free to let us know what this thing can kind of look like anything which Damn, i thought okay. is as we've mentioned in the previous on earth arcana is my favorite aspect that when it lets you as the player and the character to put your own little spin on and create some fun stuff so like that even even shoots out and says you determine the spirit's appearance some spirits can take the form of a humanoid figure with gnarled branches covered in flames or a beast wreathed in fire just something just think of something pretty cool that kind of speaks to your character and then go crazy with it ryan look at me yeah this is basically a stand from jojo's bizarre adventure i haven't seen it (laughs) there's there's what holy heck i didn't even realize until just now what this is basically a stand from jojo's bizarre adventure (laughs) i mean think about it it's a it's a spirit that you can't think about i haven't seen it you watch it. Okay, I'll ask you this at the end. Remind me, because you didn't talk to me about it. If we still have time, and I know you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, did, I did see it. Yes, I yeah, am. I am. <laughs> How on topic? Fire. Okay, so we'll talk about that later. Um, 
let's keep going. Let's talk about this stat block for the wildfire uh-huh. spirit. This is a lot of information here, but it's got some average strength with uh, plus two in dex, plus two in con. Yeah, plus yeah, one yeah, whatever, in whatever. The HP in... can change as you get level up. Okay, um, but it can attack with its flame seed or fiery teleport. And uh, can it's interesting because it says each willing creature of your choice, as well as a spear, within five feet of it can teleport thirty feet away. So that's a kind of a good, another good GTFO ability. It's really cool. I like this guy a lot. I couldn't see me playing this. Whoa! Let's see about the last one too. You're gonna step away from Morlocks? No. Oh, no. oh never mind. I need to start thinking about it uh, in case I die. I almost died last time. Oh, this, this is scary. We're getting scary, man. Things are it's getting scary. You're getting into scary areas. <laughs> but this guy's cool, and it gets even stronger. Like we're only at sixth level here. This next part. Yeah, this here. one's nuts. Bond, and I think this was the one. The wording on this was a bit weird. The bond with your wildfire spirit does now enhance your destructive and restorative spells mm-hmm. that you have at your disposal. Whenever you now cast one of the spells that deals fire damage or restores hit points while your wildfire spirit is active. Okay. Out on the battlefield, roll a d8. And this is the sentence that's weird. So here yeah, we go. No, you're roll a d8, about. and you gain a bonus to one roll of the spell equal to the number. I assume in- it's some either the attack roll, so the d20 roll, or the damage slash um, a health roll. It can be one or or both, or one one or the other. One roll of the spell. Equal to the number rolled. This one took me a second to try to figure out too. How I would so read it is so it's either the healing yes. or the damage. Is you yeah. add a d8 to one of the rolls. Yeah, to either uh, the d20 attack roll to see if you hit something, or uh, the damage roll after the fact. I don't think you can do it to the attack roll. I think it's only to the damage or the healing numbers. Well, it says one roll of the spell. But it also says um, enhances your destructive or restorative yeah. spells, meaning they're more destructive or they're more restorative. Yeah. Which isn't a literal rule, but I would say that it's only the damage die or the healing die. And you get to pick one of the die that you roll to add a D8. Again, to. though, they definitely need to work on the wording. Yes, they do. Big time. Because for a little bit, I needed to ring. And you gain a bonus to one roll of the spell equal to the yeah, number like, rolled. Yeah, like, what is this one? What are they talking about? One roll of Where the spell? Where am I adding a roll to what? Dinner roll? Who took my sweet roll? Skyrim. Uh, but the spell can also originate from the wildfire spirit. So if you have to do a touch, like cure wounds or raise dead or something that's a touch spell, and you're not close to the guy, you're super hurt, you want to heal your friend, you can just have your spirit walk over to the guy. You want to know what one of my favorite features... There's a problem features, with too, damage. You what? want to know what one of my favorite features in the game is? What game? In this game. What game? Or this one, yeah. What, what feature? D&D. Flames of Life. Flames of Life? This is your favorite feature, and it's not even a feature that comes out yet. It's one of them. I just love this thing so much. This is our level 10 um, mm-hmm. Circle of Wildfire feature. And it basically means that if something that is small or larger, a creature... Um, that you can see dies within 30 feet of you or your spirit, you can take a reaction and cause primal flames to wreath and spring out of this thing that is now dying. Uh, and while those flames are active, if a creature you see touches those flames, the creature regains hit points or takes fire damage. Your choice up to, or I mean, equal to 2d10 plus your wisdom modifier. So something uh- dies... Yeah, and your party member can knowingly, if they understand this ability, touch it and gain health. Mm-hmm. And the only way that I can see damage possibly working for this is if you force somebody into it. Yeah, that's that was my other issue. Like, how with do you get things to take damage? Yeah, it doesn't doesn't entirely. Sh- it's not entirely. Sh- I'm not entirely sure how they mean touch because I'm not sure an enemy is going to willingly touch these flames. And it doesn't have a range on if you can shoot these flames out towards an enemy to do damage, so I don't entirely know. You, my the what only I mean. thing I could see that this works for the damage is if consistently during a long drawn out fight, the enemies are seeing that your teammates are gaining health by touching this fire. Sure. So something fails an intelligence save and they go to touch it to heal as well, but they take the damage. Sure. Or if you know you want to say fuck you to one of your party members. <laughs> Yeah, I could. I definitely see the more utility aspect of this just being the heal people rather than you the damage aspect. You can do this aspect. up to five times, of course, equal to your wisdom modifier if you're yeah. applying at a level at twenty for maximum uh, ability score. And you regain them all when you sleep. 
Yes. So again, like the wording on this is just not great, but I love the idea. Yeah, I feel like whoever wrote these did probably didn't write the other ones because this is the weak. These are the weakest wording subclasses we've seen so far. Yes, and usually, like I, you know, went through college. I've read a, a bit of literature <gasps> despite. Con- con- <laughs> oh yeah, Ryan graduated! <laughs> Yay! Oh, yeah. oh, did you hear my friends yell for you? No. You didn't? Kevin and Christine and all of them were there for another friend, and they go, did Brian just graduate? And I go, yeah. And they go, yeah, we just yelled for him. That's hilarious. No, I, 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 was just, I, I didn't hear my family yell. I was just trying not to fall across the stage. You, you probably heard Kevin go, yeah, Ryan! <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. So yeah, that warmed my heart. I forgot to tell you about that until just now. Um, but yeah, the writing of these just... Even for me to notice that this is just kind of wonky is weird. Yeah. I expect a bit different, even for playtest material from Wizards of the Coast. Well, I'll there are three on this one, so maybe they were just like trying to get it out. Yeah. Just like us, on. they were just getting sick of writing. Just just get some freelance guy to be like, hey, I'm just read this over. Does it make sense? Well, again, I think they probably didn't want to because they're not making any money off of this. And once they, and then once they release it for, for real, they'll probably go crazy. But even, even just abiding by the rule of don't use a word in one sentence twice or even in the paragraph twice if you can avoid just make it. sure you shoot a tweet to them and they'll they'll be sure to answer all your questions say sure. hey you sound like a neanderthal hey dumbass dump it don't do that never never yeah, never start a question with don't hey, do that dumbass. and don't tell them that the dungeon dungeon call sent you <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah just be careful there so yeah i took the last two ryan come on take take this blazing endurance yeah, you give me the last one on most of these it seems blazing endurance the 14th level spot. only 14th yeah, it's the big, you might the big want boy. a multi class with this guy. No, you think you about it. Never want to do that. Well, if you only get a 14th level, you know, maybe, maybe you want a multi class. Maybe. Maybe. So, Take Blazing away. Endurance. So, the bond at this point, and this is similar. What was the one? We did another one where that was the mock one, the one that was like straight out JoJo's, you said, um, yeah. where each level up kind of enhanced what had already existed beforehand. And this is kind of in a similar vein where each level up has given you. Extra features for your little wildfire spirit. This one is no different. Makes it exceptionally strong. And if you were to drop to zero hit points, and I guess and it says and don't die outright, for example, if it's not like, let's say you have 100 HP. Okay, it, fuck. This is insane. This yeah, is actually is. crazy. Um, so, for example, if you get hit for 500 damage, which would be a little, I don't know who you're fighting, that's giving you 500 damage, but that would kill you immediately. But, for, but if you're not dying immediately... Or, I guess, power with kill or something like that. You drop to one hit point instead and then gain temporary Hold on, pause, hit points. Pause, pause. Sure. Really think about this number, everybody. Please <laughs> actually think about this. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. So, first, you, you drop to one hit point instead and then gain temp HP equal to five times your druid level. So, at this point, at you level get 14. 14 times five. What, yeah. you, what even is that? And each creature of your choice within 30 feet takes an additional 2d10 plus 14 fire damage. You get 70 temp HP. Jesus Christ. Temp HP. I think there are... Aren't there ways to just remove temp HP from somebody? Probably. Probably. But the, and it can hurt people around you, so be careful. Um, but this guy seems to be themed after a phoenix, in, in a sense. Yeah, that, that's badass. Because rebirth, destruction... Um, uh, but this is literally Avdol from part three of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Because I could, that guy's also I could really it. see this being a huge epic finish to a gigantic big encounter that like, oh no, Johnny's just got killed by the Lich, and then wait a minute, I have blazing endurance. And he pops back up and slays the guy. How sick. Yeah, imagine this in like a Let's Play podcast where um like in light of uh, the, the 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 adventure zone where you know one of you know the McElroy brothers dies, but you hear like them in post add some f- like crackling fire and then a little oh. rush of flames as the guy comes back. So cool. Yeah, I feel everyone getting sad, and then uh oh, yeah. he's back. So final thoughts, Ryan. Barring the awkward wording of this whole thing, how do you feel about it? It's extremely powerful. Yes, extremely. Fi- I mean, first of all, firebolt and fireball. Like I said earlier, nothing to scoff at. And Blazing Endurance is probably the, one of the strongest features I've ever read. Yes, definitely very straightforward. Fire is the big thing, so they have a crux. 
Mm -hmm. Um, They've got a great companion slash familiar to use. Mm -hmm. Really, really interesting role play to come from. A really interesting community that they could be a part of in their background. I like it a lot. Work on the wording, of course, as I said, bar that. So sorry for mentioning it again, but I like it. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure roleplay. And cool. Plane of Fire stuff. So again, sticking with the planer theme. Mm-hmm. Maybe a cool book on the planes coming up real soon. Or at the very least, a podcast about the planes that we could be doing. Wow. And I mean, think about it. I mean, they just released Ravnica stuff. So this kind of fits in with it. Did the they? Planeswalkers. So these guys could probably be I that. Mean, and not recently. That was a while ago. We haven't even covered it yet, Ryan. That was a long time ago. That was, that was before the podcast even existed. That was only like see, five, five months ago. That's not true at all. Hold on. December 1, November 2, 3, 4. It's only like three months. That's not right. Wait, I'm not counting right. We started in July. Yeah, the one, guild, are you talking about the Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica? Five. We've been doing this for five months. Yeah, you're talking, about the guild, you're talking about the Ravnica book that they made, right? Yeah, that came out like not, not even a full year ago. It came out in 2018, so yes. Told you. November of 28th. I think you just saw November. <laughs> Damn it. Because I have that book, and I've not gotten a D&D book this year, so. Okay, all right. That's why we haven't covered it. Sure. Okay. <laughs> it, I, I, love, yeah, it I, I got it because I, I love that setting of magic, so like, I need it. Yeah. Now, I, I don't think I got to. F- whoa, whoa. Well, you're right. So there's, there's a problem I've got with this next guy. Yeah, the od- Odomancy wizard? Yes. Okay. We'll you, get to you, it pretty quickly. You want to say um, your problems now? No, we'll get there. I'll keep okay. it on topic. Right. Um, but if for those of you that don't know um, Onomancy, um, they describe it. Ooh, got a little burp there. They describe it a little bit. Basically, it's a wizard of things involving the true names of. Mm-hmm. And it's an actual people. thing, too. It is. Yeah. Um, if you've ever seen Blood Blockade Battlefront or Kekai Sensen, or or have seen anything where vampires or demons can only be destroyed if whatever's trying to mm-hmm. get rid of them knows their true name. That's a very popular trope. So think about yeah. that. That's that's kind of what this is coming from, or literally what it is coming from. Um, Onomancy. So I think it's cool. Uh, Onomancy. So practitioners of this magic know the power of names. These wizards follow the tradition of onomancers and encompass... Uh, all the power that words and names can, you know, exist and be manipulated by. Um, cool stuff. Very interesting. Uh, Very interesting. Directed role play here. Um, I like it a lot. Yeah, so, I, I could see a whole. I could see there being like a whole sect of like secret wizards who constantly are changing their names or using pseudonyms too, that yeah. are following this tradition. And you've even got um, a box text that kind of lets you know what a true name is. It's something that you really truly consider when you think. My name is dot dot dot. That is likely what your true name is. So for Slim those Shady. of you that need to figure that out, Slim Shady could be his true name. He stood up. You can try to hide your name, uh, keeping it secret. Somebody who's an onomancer might be very secret of it because they know the power somebody could wield over them. And this is very similar to the druids in the fact that they could come from a really insane or creative society of onomancers. Yeah. Have some enemies there. There's and, a whole secret you know, wizard school that exists with onomancers yeah and maybe to get in this school no that would be dangerous but you have to reveal your true name to the headmaster or, or they're all demon hunters it could be really cool really really cool vampire with strahd this could fit right into strahd you could maybe make strahd like tweak it and hide his name and make it something cool well um, i believe and it's been a bit since i've read it, i think there is something that does involve his like true name as well you learn that through stuff and it's not strahd it's like a full-on name I think um, we found that out at some point. That's pretty cool. Very cool. So, um, you know, as a quick guide, as it's said in this as well, a creature has a true name if it understands one language or it has an alignment, which is interesting. Which is nearly everything. Yes. So, right off the bat, here's another one of those bonus proficiencies. Ryan, what do these guys get at level two? Seems kind of random, but you get calligraphy tools. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That's fine. I mean, it just seems it seems random, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, write names. But calligraphy is not. Yeah, I guess. I mean, I guess of all the different tools to give them, I guess that's the one that makes the most sense. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you think about it, of course, maybe 
something along in this um, description for all of these features lets them write a name down. Yeah. Um, and it's important. Um, so, so a lot of people kind of brush over tools. And if you have not really looked into much of your, what, your, what tool proficiency is, what you can do with your tools, I definitely recommend opening up Xanathar's and going to the tool section, which actually it's in the Dungeon Master section, so most players may not have seen it. But there is like, for, for example, for the for calligraphy supplies, um, they say you can use it to your expertise in examining maps, and you can use them to, to run a map's, a map's age, include find any hidden messages, similar facts. Um, That's cartography. Nope, it's in the calligraphy calligraphy surprise. Su- That's su- dumb. Supply. <laughs> Make a cartographer's <laughs> toolkit. Uh, there is. Then what? No, it's see, it's important. It's not saying you make the map. It's saying you know how to decipher any secret, hidden sections of the map and determine a map's age by just looking at the paper. You know. Fine. I'll allow and the it this ink. Time. Look at the ink. You know, clear free supplies have ink in it. It does. I'll allow parchments. it this time. Don't get cocky. <laughs> I have the final say on all of these things, as we know. It says that your provisionally can augment the benefit of successful checks made to analyze or investigate writing scrolls or other texts, um, runes, and specifically you could use them to forge a signature, spot forge text, identify a writer of non magical script, which is pretty big. I guess, and determine a writer's state of mind while writing something. So again, if you haven't looked at the tool section, definitely do that. This is this is really interesting. That that's really cool. And that's not even a feature of it. It's just something that you can freaking do. The tools. I think nowhere has calligraphy proficiency. Just remember that, Ryan. Do you have any tools? No, nowhere does. Oh, nowhere does. That's his other character. Mm Hmm. Keep that in mind. Just remember that. So let's keep going because Ryan, we got like a little bit about of time and a couple of things to wrap up in the end that I didn't get to in the extract middle of this. name. Is there a next second level feature? Take it away. So extract name. You magically because again, this whole thing revolves around finding a creature's true name. This so is my problem, by the way. Extract name allows you to, if they fail a wisdom save, to extract their true name as well as having them be charmed for a time being. What happens um, if you've if they um they save though? You can never do it again. There's no refresh on that. You just can never discern their true name again yeah. with this feature. Yeah. Ever. You cannot but use that's, this feature. But on that's okay because I, I doubt the rest of the class features are built around this idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Fun fact: they are. They are. That's this is that is my I get it. I understand it and there are other ways to divulge a true name yeah, from somebody. Yes. But come like give it like a timer or something. Yeah. <sighs> but I mean, think about it from this point of view. If you're using it on as a damaging combat spell, even if there is a timer, you're not gonna be able to use it like it anyway. Yeah. It's, It'd be that's mainly my for one like problem. long cons and stuff. Yeah. Again, there's other ways to figure out a true name, but that's just, it's rough. That's rough. There, there better be some good stuff down here. But on the flip side of that, if the campaign is centered around demons and you can learn their true name, boom, take that DM. I just ended the whole campaign. Wimple bimple. Game over. Yeah, so it's, it can be strong in the right situation, and I get the limitation, but. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> well, building off of that is fateful naming. Yes. Okay, so now you're able to bend magic to assist or hinder the things of uh, which you know their true mm-hmm. names. So even those names um, that only function as a, an anchor to affect others around them. So um, you now have Bane and Bless. They're mm-hmm. wizard spells, so you can add them to your spell book. You don't get them but you are able to prepare Which normally them. like cleric and uh, pal and type stuff. Yes. They're always prepared and don't count against your spells prepared for the day. Cool. You can either cast um, either spell without using a spell slot, which is great if you use yeah, the only. true name. Um, and you can uh, cast these spells in this way a number of times equal to intelligence modifier, which seems to be a, a very re- large reoccurring 
um, aspect they're adding to a lot of these is number two, your modifier. Which is um, good. So you're really, you might want to min-max this guy a little bit. Just well, that's, sure. I think they're making it so you can't do it infinite. Yeah. Because um, you could cast that spell infinitely. Yeah. Yeah, five up to five times unless you play past twenty uh, ability score, of course. So I, I so do not cool. see Bane ever getting casted because that's an that. enemy spell, and I don't see you in the middle of combat using it. I guess it's a bonus action to extract their name, not a full action, which I guess is a good thing. But if that fails, Maybe you do then it you out can't... of combat. Yeah, but so you are in combat. Okay, yeah. we're in combat. <laughs> You're in combat. I don't really see many people using that as an. I can see. I definitely see Bless getting cast all the time because you'll know your friends' true names. I'm sure. And if they don't tell you, then you can extract the name. I guess we really need to. But I'm sure if you can convince them to give you your true name, then boom, there you go. You maybe can you give them Bless found all the out um, a guy that you've seen uh, several times, like an enemy or so, and you've already divulged his name. And you've got a leg up now, and you can cast yeah. Bane the next time you see him. Now, there's a lot I mean, of this stuff is for long cons. And I also cost, don't see much of this ability, this faithful naming, getting used past like fifth level because both of those are concentrations. And wizards have a lot of really cool concentration stuff that we're will be. St we're still in second over. level only, though. Yeah, so this will be used for a bit, but after a certain level, probably never touched again. I'm always like, if something's tied to a class, I'm always a fan of value. And honestly, this doesn't have it. Yeah. So, value meaning it continues to be useful for you as you grow. But something that does is the next thing. Resonant utterance. Very cool. Very cool. Level six, an onomancy feature where you learn words of power called resonance. Very anime, I would say. <laughs> which allow you to tailor, tailor your spells uh -huh, through like the that. use of a target's true name. That was, I've never done that voice before. I don't know <laughs> yeah. um, well, you get, if, just yeah, to save ahead. us time on this, you get, there's six resonance. And you can choose, um, you get, it says you get a certain number um, equal to half of your wizard level. Uh, actually, that's how many times you can resonate. Um, and then once you hit 10th level, you can add, you can learn two to your plethora of resonance. Mm. And with these, is whenever you cast a spell utilizing a true name of the creature that's being targeted, you can add kind of an, an addition to these spells. Some of them being pretty cool, some of them pretty, pretty damaging. And I, I really like this feature of it. I think it's very nice. I do too. And this is what I would say is this is the class here. The things prior to it were flavor, were fluff. This mm -hmm. is really what yeah. it is. We could dive into it, but it's all there for you to read. But let me rattle off the names just to give you some uh, reason to go check it out yourself. Absorption, devastation, disillusion. I think that is what that word is. Yeah. Nullification, puppetry, and sympathy. Uh, and you can make all sorts of inferences as to what those are, but there's a lot of D I don't whatever think, here. And correct me if I'm wrong, there is not a single thing on that that is helpful to a party member. No. So it's all, so all. It's all for enemies, and I can see it being a little cumbersome because you'd have to learn their true name first. So in a campaign where your DM maybe is kind of like me and improvs a lot, unless they're just really great at catering towards this, you might not have a good time with random encounters. Yeah. So think, think about but if you have a recurring villain like Braxton, it can make, like Braxton said, it can make for a really exciting boss encounter. We get to use all this stuff because you know their true name and can go ham with it. Did we touch on the 14th level? No, we haven't touched that yet. Let's fire through relentless naming. You have naming. learned how to bypass a named creature's defenses against certain types of damage. Uh, casting a spell that deals damage to a creature whose name you speak as a part of casting the spell can cause the spell to deal force or psychic damage to the creature instead of the spell's normal type. So this can be insanely useful for those creatures in higher levels that have immunities. In yeah, or insanely even useful. yeah. So this guy, in one word, if I had to give it to it, is situational. Yeah. And very cool flavor-wise, but not as cool mechanically. Like, this, I think, is definitely the weakest of the three, but it still is just as cool. Yeah. I, 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 I love the idea lore-wise and roleplay-wise, but it's a little rough around the edges everywhere else. Yeah, I feel like, again, this isn't something to critique. This is not a Arcana. This is playtest material. It. Definitely. Jeremy, get your shit together. If... If you do a rough draft, you should probably make a final draft <laughs> at some point. 
Um, yeah. It's a book. Uh-huh. So, but it's, it's I enjoyed it's, this. These got me plain, excited. It's plain stuff again. It's abyssal. That's why. I, that's why I make the plain reference too. I think. I think. W- would you play these classes? Yeah. Subclasses. No, I think long, I would. A long pause, but I think I would. Uh, definitely the druid first, cleric, and then the wizard. I'd still prefer the stuff in Xanathar's. I think that's still like the best Xanathar subclasses is so far. Probably my favorite book that exists for Though 5e. I do like the first Unearthed Arcana stuff that we covered. The sorcerer. Yes, that was really great too. Aberrant mind. Uh, so wrapping up here as we track through Unearthed Arcana again, and as we will do next week. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, there are a couple things that I wanted to do to uh, clean house, as uh, Juice McElroy often says. Oh, get the uh, vacuum podcast. ready. <laughs> um, just to start off, uh, Ryan. Yeah. There is an artist that I tweeted about. Uh-huh. Uh huh. On our account at um, Dungeon Crawl artist. Pod on Twitter. Um, she, the algorithm loved her for a little bit for some reason because she made a really wonderful kind of infographic as to her commission structure. Uh, and it came across my uh, feed, and I was looking, and I mean, you you tell me if these are great prices for a kind of chibi small art yeah, of your you. character twenty for a token for your character thirty bucks good price. full body design. These are great art sixty five dollars or a custom design here from twenty to forty. Um, even just like a sketch sheet like ten bucks. And I saw this I was like, wow, that's really great. If you look at the art and you're kind of a fan of um really characterized near anime style art, but kind of more grounded in reality. Uh, her name and I don't even Ryan. Why don't you try to pronounce this? Uh, Scotton, Scotton, or something Scotton, like that. Yeah, so it's um, it's Scottish Gaelic, is what it says. Yes, and I can't even pretend to. But you can that also I call know them how to pronounce Grey this. Suit. Yes, Grey Sue is also something that Much she easier. goes by, uh, and her handle is at g s g a t h a n. Please give her a check out or go to our yeah. Twitter. I retweeted her. Um, great art. I'm thinking of commissioning something for myself when I can get off my lazy butt. Um and type a good description of one of my characters. So yeah, definitely give her a check out. Uh, she seems to be awesome and is uh constantly pumping out new stuff. Really cool, awesome. Give her a check. Ryan, did you watch episode nineteen of <laughs> Demon Slayer? I did watch episode nineteen of Demon Slayer. The Speaking anime. of good art, oh, the artwork and the the soundtrack was just fantastic, man. I just emotional. Oh man, spoilers for. Demon Slayer, yeah, we'll, we'll chat so about this if for you too want long. to tune out now and not listen to our anime talk, you're welcome to, but we'll be chatting here for a minute or so. Yeah. Meant to mention shout out um Graysu earlier. We were going through it. Um so hopefully I hope you suck by at the end. Need some great art. She even has a sale. Start touching back on that again. If you want to get five tabletop RGP uh, RPG tokens for your party, 125 bucks. Big discount Holy there. Mackerel. Um so I think it was amazing. I watched it a little <laughs> bit, but I was absolutely floored. They create this flashback in anime, and I hate flashbacks so much. So much. <laughs> this isn't something that we've seen, and it was a moment where, where Tanjiro flashes back to Tanjiro. a character we haven't heard about at all. Like, really, his father. Yeah. We've no, seen we silhouettes we, and images. Yeah. But the first image we get of this guy is just this eerie, ominous. Emaciated dude. He's just, ah, oh, we don't need to describe it too much, but I'm glad Ryan watched it. You guys should definitely see it. It That, that episode shook uh, social media and the anime industry. Yeah, I just want to say my favorite thing about it, and this isn't really a spoiler or anything, but um, there's a moment where a character is nearing death and one of the uh, other characters mentions um, about, like, see, like, you know, people say life flashes before your eyes, whatever. Um just kind of almost not really a throwaway line, but just not really, you know, yada, yada, whatever. Cool. Yeah, sure. We hear about that stuff all the time. Life flashing. But it says, but she says uh, it's our brain trying to convince ourselves to stay alive. And then cut to near the end. Another character is nearing death. And then flashback to this moment where someone's telling him, you know, it's something that keeps him alive, basically. And it brings it all for a full circle and it just is, I think that's, 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 that's good storytelling. It's one of those moments that transcends the genre itself and is just good storytelling. Like it, yes. it reeks contrary of the anime to, on occasion. Look, yeah, contrary to most anime where they, the storytelling can drag on be, and it's happened in, it has happened in Demon Slayer. It has, it has but, such a good moment. They ruined it. Yes. But then they, they kind of redeem themselves here, I think. And the episodes after this, Ryan, though it isn't a, 
the, and the animation stays. This is one of the most consistently well animated shows I've seen. Yeah. In contrast with Fire Force, where it kind of gets wonky on occasion, the character design and the, the style is maintained throughout. But the episodes after this are dialogue heaven and character building. Oh, that's, that's my favorite heaven. part of stuff. They introduce a big group of, of people that you're going to love the, the Hashiras, the pillars. Um, so Ooh. I'm really excited for you to see the rest. I'm excited. Yeah. Okay. So sorry. I just want to talk about that a little bit because I've been no, trying to pester we Ryan. Can have to... A, we can have a po- pop culture part of our podcast near the end yeah, where you yeah. talk about whatever I'm watching. Yeah. So we're going over a little bit here. Definitely check out um, Graysu or S- uh, at G S G A T H A N uh, on Twitter for some really great prices on our commissions for 2019, 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason I actually made the Thanos reference earlier is because I did just watch any game finally after a long time. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I haven't even seen the one prior to it either. But I, I think Infinity War is very good if you ever get a chance. In game was okay. Oh, con- controversial. It was all right, but I think Infinity War was great. All right, caught me off guard. No, no good. I've heard. I've heard good things about him. But, but if you want to uh, watch a superhero thing, watch The Boys. Best superhero thing to ever exist. That is The Boys. On Amazon. Spelled Fantastic. The and Boys. Yep, perfect. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out this time, guys. Uh, I do enjoy listening. covering the Unearthed Arcana, despite, you know, the dread, the existential dread that sets in. <laughs> Jeremy Crawford posts something new, and we're forever Screw locked you, in this Groundhog Day of posting unearthed arcana podcast material yeah we're never gonna stop we're gonna have to change our name to the unearthed cast can't stop won't stop my name is braxton my name is ryan thanks for thanks for hanging out guys have a wonderful rest of your week if this is tuesday when you're listening to it enjoy that good old wednesday that's sure to come hump day hump day take care see you next week